Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're on site here at Cowlick County College, where I've got Bob Moffat with me, who is the head welding instructor. Now, we get a lot of questions that come through our forum, and one of them came to me and had to do with, do you know how to do the lay wire technique, and does it work? Well, I've seen all kinds of crazy techniques, but you'll notice in a lot of my videos, I'm teaching the dab technique. And what that is, is you have a TIG torch in hand, you create a puddle before you ever think about adding filler material. Okay, so that forces you to run your foot feet for your amperage, your torch, and then you dab filler. Now, if you only have this much sticking out of your filler, you dab, 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 and you'll get to this finger and it'll get hot. So you have to learn to add the filler if you want to make a long weld. Well, what is this lay wire technique? So I took a, a, a thin wire, fairly thin wire, and I just laid it in place and thought, let me see what it'll do. And when you get into your small diameters and you try the same test that I did, you start your arc and the wire just burns back. So I came to the college here and come to find out there is a lay wire technique that's out there, not used very often, but you know, I, I solicited Bob's help in this uh, to talk about this technique. Now, Bob, not that you agree or disagree, but have you ever heard of the lay wire technique? Sure. Okay, and, sure. and tell me, you know, when do you use it, when do you not use it? Does it get misused? It gets misused, for sure. Um, you know, my interpretation of a lay wire would be to constantly leave the wire in the weld pool all the time. Okay, you, you mentioned laying this across the, the joint of the filler wire and welding over the top of it. Um, probably a pretty dangerous thing to do, um, simply because, like you said, the, the wire can, can burn back away from what you're trying to do if you're wanting to continually fill this in the throat of the fillet weld here and the wire burns back, now you're just melting parent metal? Are you actually making the same profile of weld all the way across? So you, you have to manipulate this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to say, let's, what are, what's the specifications of the weld? What, that's, that's what we're welding to. So, you know, if we identify a process that we can get a, a repeatable, consistent, good looking weld, by leaving the filler wire in here at the correct angle, getting good weld mechanics, yeah, by all means, use it. Uh, that's well, that's you, the main thing. I was going to ask you, if you can successfully do that and make a nice looking weld, is there a risk of not getting into root penetration? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we're not running enough amperage and we're melting the filler wire and it looks good, but you know, go cut a cross section across this and polish it and etch it and look at it and you got, you have the throat of the weld peeking at you, that's, that's not good. Okay. If, if it's something that's in a critical nature and it needs to hold some, some loading, some vibration, um, yeah, we, we really need to look at driving that weld down into the throat, dabbing the filler wire and filling it up, create the profile of the fillet weld. In, in my opinion. Well, well Bob, I can tell you, that I, I've tried this, and I can, I can show the audience how to do it wrong. <laughs> what, I, what I'd like to do for that very special occasion when you do use it, I'd like for you to show us how to do it correctly, or at okay. least a, a, a good way. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll get our safety gear on, and uh, we'll join you in just a few minutes. Okay. okay. We have a structural fillet weld in front of us here. I've gone ahead and changed over from the big gas lens that we were using earlier. I don't feel the need to use the big stuff on here. Uh, normal collet body, uh, number seven cup. I think we're going to be fine. I'm still using an eighth of an inch tungsten. I didn't trade that out. I've got a couple of different sizes of fillet wire here and I want to demonstrate several things. Uh, one of them is the dab te technique. I have a piece of 3 8 base metal with a quarter inch piece coming off of it to create the fillet weld. You know, the intent here is to drive this weld into the throat of the weld. Okay, so I want to create the pool, add the wire, and create the fillet weld. Now, what I'm seeing in here in, the, in my vision is this is 
b before I add wire, as this weld's progressing, it's cutting into the throat of this fillet wire, filler, fillet weld here. So another technique is if I just lay this wire, keep it still, uh, create the weld pool and put this in here and wash over the top of it. That would be more of a lay wire technique, okay? Let's see if I can demonstrate that. Now, <clears throat> what I'm looking at here is slightly bigger weld, but also what I'm noticing under the hood here is I'm, as I'm making this weld, I don't, I don't think that that's getting completely down into the throat of the weld. It looks like it's just kind of laying up on top of that to me. So, you know, if this was kind of a, a non-critical situation and more for visual appeal, I'd probably make the weld like that. I'd try to keep it as small as I could. Again, not necessarily the right thing to do. Um, I want to see if I can demonstrate a technique gone wrong. I believe uh, Wyatt mentioned uh, laying the wire in there and the arc making the wire just burn away. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can simulate that. I'm going to stick my tungsten out a little bit more. Um, and we were just going to lay this in here and see if we can't make it burn back away. This is obviously what you don't want to do, but... Now, believe it or not, I was trying to make the weld. I, I didn't keep cramming this in here, but just laying this in here, you can see that the wire burnt back. I got a nice big ball on the end of it. It's kind of oxidized. There were times here that I'm not making the weld. I'm making, a, I'm making an arc on two sides of the material. Uh, I, I wouldn't be interested in doing that. Okay, so I, I watched your technique, and, and I've got to ask you this question. In, in your world of welding, the type of fabrication, uh, piping, uh, construction, things like that. What do you do the most of? Do you dab? Do you do you walk the cup? What what is it that you do the most of? What what technique do I use the most of? Yes. I think half of my life has been spent using the dab technique, and half my life's been spent walking the cup and laying the wire in there. Okay. So I, it, I mean, I have to be real honest with you. I I do them both, uh, and I do them all the time. You know, if you yeah. ask me to do 500 of these types of welds for something that you're building, I would probably do the dab technique just so I could, just so I know that it's a good, clean weld down into the throat. Yeah, I could get real lazy on you and just lay the wire in there and wash over the top of it. But if you put those welds in service and one of them fails because of my laziness, we've got problems. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're probably going to come back and say, uh, I really don't feel like paying you on this deal, and I, you know. So, you know, again, to me, I'm very conscientious about what the in-service of the weld is going to be. Uh, we're going to limit those liabilities of failure, for sure. That's why we try to identify everything that goes into codes and specifications, material types, filler wires, size of the weld. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd have to say... Half and half, I, and I favor neither one of them. I, I'm not, I'm not yeah. a big proponent of of laying it in there and walking over the top of it. I'm, I'm not saying that the dab technique is going to be the right one all the time either. Yeah. I, I'm just real open-minded when it comes to making any kind of weld. Well, so. what's interesting is the world that I live in is mostly thin wall, and I'm probably more like 95% dab because of that. Sure. And, 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 I, and I agree with that, and, there, and I, do, I am too. Anytime I get real thin, uh, yeah, definitely a dab technique. And, and, the, and the 5% that's left over is just a slight weave, and it's only because I have a bad fit up. That's it. I just have to catch the edges. So uh, I, I appreciate all you've done for education, and I want to thank you 
for watching our TIG Time Show. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.